Hello and welcome to another Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-red spells deck featuring Malik, Reforged Researcher as our commander. This 5-mana Weird Detective has power and toughness equal to twice the number of instant and sorcery cards in our graveyard, and then also says the first instant or sorcery spell we cast each turn costs 3 less to cast, so that applies both to our turn as well as the opponent's turn. So to build around Malik, ideally we can ramp into it, so we can maybe play a Malik on turn 5 with one spare mana available, and then our deck is filled with 4 mana instants and sorceries that we can then cast for just a single mana thanks to the discount, and then try and pull ahead thanks to that ability. And then if we can ever string together some treasure makers, we can maybe cast even more spells on the cheap in the opponent's turn, and then take it from there. And then we're really trying to close out the game with Malik, which is going to grow to be quite large. Now of course it doesn't have any built-in evasion, so that's why some of our finishers, like our various flip effects can also help close out the game through any blockers. So let's take a look at our deck. I've broken it down into a few different categories, starting with the mana acceleration. These are ways to play Malik ahead of schedule and ideally have some mana left untapped so we can still cast some spells on the cheap. Then we've got plenty of removal spells, some cheaper burn spells and mass bound spells as well to eventually clear the path for Malik to attack. And then we've got a lot of card draw spells as you can see, some early cantrips to smooth out our draw and fill the graveyard for Malik, and then eventually some expensive spells that we can discount with the ability and pull ahead. And then we don't have a lot of counter spells in the deck, but they will all generate some extra mana in some way, either untapping lands or making treasure tokens, so we further make use of Malik's ability. And then we get to our finishers, these are the fling effects or team or battle rage to give double strike and trample, so we can attack past any blockers. And then the miscellaneous section includes a few more creatures. Malik is one of the few creatures in the whole deck, but we do also have the Steed Shark to maybe help us incubate, and Haughty Jin also plays a similar role to Malik in the deck. And then we've got cards like Mizzix's Mastery to replay some expensive spells from the graveyard, and Time Warp to take an extra turn. So now for the deep dive, starting with our mana acceleration, we've got the classic two mana artifacts, Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone, and the Iron Crag. And then at three mana, some of my favorites include Midnight Clock, which can also eventually refresh our hand. And then a file of Galadriel can be pretty nice if we're empty-handed, drawing us an extra card, can also synergize with some of our discard and draw effects. And then there's the Celestus, letting it switch between day and night for more card selection, and a Worn Power Stone making two mana if we get to and tap with it. And then we also have some cheaper treasure makers, like Seize the Spoils to discard and draw to make a treasure, Prismari Command can draw to discard to and also make a treasure, but can also be used as removal. And then taking a look at our removal section, we've got Frostbite, the reason why we're playing all those snow-covered basics, so we can deal 3 damage with it. Of course, Lightning Bolt, even though these don't get a discount from Malik, they're still nice to have to interact early on in the game, maybe take out a Mana Elf. Then a Cyclonic Rift is excellent, since we can easily overload it with a 3 mana discount from Malik, and then by bouncing everything, Malik gets a chance to attack and connect with the opponent. Then there's Unauthorized Exit to Surveil. Any Surveil cards also get better with Malik as your commander, as you can maybe fill the graveyard with additional instants and sorceries to increase its power and toughness. Then there's a Braid, can also hit artifacts. Fires of Victory we can easily kick to draw an extra card. FRS Dispersal, a bounce spell that also lets us surveil, and again with a discount from Malik we can easily cast it for a single mana. Then there's a few sweepers as well, Anger of the Gods, Brotherhood's End, and Storm's Wrath, and the new ill-timed explosion doesn't hit Planeswalkers, but we can draw and discard with it too, so even if there's nothing to wipe away, we can still draw two cards with it, which is nice. And then River's Rebuke, another mass bounce spell, and then a Chandra can maybe help copy some of our instants and sorceries, can also be very synergistic. And then a Magma Opus we can also cast on the cheap, and that can decimate the opponent's board, make a 4-4 elemental and draw two cards. And finally, Shadow Skull Smashing can also be played as a land, or as a nice removal spell. And then our card draw includes some cheap cantrips, Consider, Opt, and Sleight of Hand. And then there's a Gaze, which we can also flash back to Surveil 3. Faithless Looting, draw to discard two, can maybe discard it to a different spell, so we can just flash it back out of the graveyard so we're not down on cards. And then a Curate to Surveil 2 draw card. Expressive Iteration, even though it doesn't get a discount from Malik, is just a great card. And then we get to some of our 4 mana instants that we can ideally cast for just 1 mana. Behold the Multiverse, Scry to draw 2. Chemister's Insight has Jumpstart, so we can replay it out of the graveyard by discarding a land. Reign of Revelation, draw 3, discard. And then we've got our Treasure Makers, Big Score, Pirate Spillage, and Unexpected Windfall. Big Score is the best one, since it's an instant and only costs a single red with Malik out. Pirate Spillage is a sorcery, still great since we can cast it in our turn. Make 2 treasure 
treasures and then we can still use those treasures to maybe cast something else in the opponent's turn and then unexpected windfall is double red to cast with malik out so this one's a little clunkier but still very nice to have and then intrude on the mind a new fact or fiction type spell that can draw us a lot of cards maybe make a large thopter token while also filling the graveyard nicely then Alorian Revealed, we can cycle early to get an island, can even get our dual lands like Steam Vents or the new Surveil land, and then we can draw three for just double blue with Malik out. Pour over the pages essentially pays for itself with Malik in play, as we get to draw three, discard a card, and untap up to two lanes. Practical Research can draw four cards and then discard two unless we discard an instant or sorcery. And then a Seagate Restoration, another nice card draw spell that can also be played as a land if needed. And finally Hit, the Mother Load, can also discover ten and potentially leave behind a lot of treasure tokens that we can then still use. Then our counter spells include Unwind to counter non-creature spells, untap up to three lanes. Rewind, counter any spell, untap up to four lanes. And then a Spell Swindle, counter spell and create X treasure tokens where X is that spell's mana value. And then a Bold Bend is a pseudo counter spell, can essentially redirect a removal spell to try and protect a Malak. And then we get to our various finishers and fling effects, including the two mana classic, sack a creature deal damage equal to its power to any target, can also cast this during the opponent's turn if they try and take out Malik, so we still get some damage on the way out. Kazul's Fury is a bit more expensive, but can also be played as a land if needed. And then Blast at 4 mana also draws a card, and we can still cast it for just a single red with Malik out. And then a Teamer Battle Rage can give Double Strike and Trample, also very good to close out the game. And Gravitic Punch we can cast and then still maybe Jumpstart in the same turn, dealing damage equal to a creature's power to a player. And then we get to the miscellaneous section where we have Case of the Ransacked Lab, discounting our instants and sorceries by one, makes it easier to cast more of them in the same turn. And if we cast four or more of them, we solve the case. And then now whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, we get to draw a card. The Haughty Djinn also discounts our instants and sorceries by one, and also grows its power equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in our graveyard. Doesn't get doubled like Malik, but still pretty good. And then at four toughness, it also survives some of our three damage sweepers. And then the Sea Shark, another 4 Toughness Flyer, lets us incubate X whenever we cast a non-creature spell where X is that spell's mana value. This also has great synergy with a discount from Malik. And then there's Mystic's Mastery to let us double dip on a spell that's in our graveyard. Can easily cast it for just a single red or even overload it for 5 mana total with Malik out. That's also quite feasible. And then finally Time Warp to take an extra turn. Doesn't even get exiled so we could even get it back from the graveyard using a card like Mystic's Mastery. Which by the way is also very nice alongside Magma Opus. If we discard it on turn 2 we could already get it back with Mystic's Mastery on turn 3. And then at the mana base I kept things very simple, lots of untapped lands, the channel lands for a bit of added utility, and then lots of dual lands, most of them entering untapped even later in the game. And then we've got a few fetch lands to fetch up our basics or to find either steam vents or the new thundering falls, letting us surveil one when it enters. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Itali Primal Conquer, so red green ramp. What do we think of our hand? Celestus can fix for red. Yeah, I mean, we've got a few bounce spells. Not exactly what we need against a ramp deck, but it can buy us some time. I'll try it. And then Mountain vs. Behold. Close call. Now let's just grab the land and then we can be greedier with future surveils. Opponent surveils. Alright, Iron Crag is not bad here. So we will be able to play turn for Malik, plus maybe cast a spell in the same turn. Can bounce Paradise Druid just yet. Field of Ruin currently doesn't have any targets. And a Mindstone's next. And a Halfling. Well, we can potentially overload Cyclonic Rifts in two turns. Opponent will keep Paradise Druid untapped. Play Malik. And then... Probably fine to take out the halfling. Could have started there actually. 
So Malak wasn't exposed to an opposing burn spell. Maybe set an upkeep stop to take out the halfling, just to be safe. Right, opponent cycles migration path, so now we could even take out Paradise Road if we want. And now Malik is a bit safer at 4 toughness. Could have also bounced with a dispersal, but I'm happy taking this out for good. Our deck doesn't have many counter spells, so the Halfling's ability is not going to be super relevant. Expand the sphere to ramp. So Cyclonic Rift not looking amazing here, since they have mostly lands on the battlefield. Draw land. Well, I guess we'll uh, start with a dispersal. Could have also upkeep cast dispersal if we set a stop so we can maybe surveil into something more exciting. Don't need those. So I'm just going to activate Celestus at this point. Okay, maybe grow Malik some more. Alright, Intrude on the Mines. Kind of regretting how I tapped my lands now. But that's a good draw. Hulking Raptor is fine. And there's Halfling. So they can still play a tally even if we bounce all their stuff. Power bluff can go. Alright, let's intrude for starters. And then looting is fine if it goes to the graveyard. Wouldn't mind to draw curates. And then maybe an authorized exit. And then if they give us the three pile, I'll have more things to discard to the looting in the first place, so that's still good. And if the spells go to the graveyard, Malak also grows. So either way, can't really go wrong here. Alright, we get a 2 pile, so we get a 3-3 three, three Thopter. And then, let's see, if we want to Cyclonic Rift in the opponent's turn, maybe after they cast Itali, that's going to cost 7 minus 3 is 4. So I can still cast a few cantrips. Don't think we need those. Of course, now we don't have the discount from Malik anymore, so just gonna have to play a land attack. And we'll see if they're interested in chumping. But with the Cyclonic Rift, we should be able to bounce everything and then set up lethal, unless they keep a lair back. Although, yeah, I guess this is non land permanent. So, our opponent does chump. Pass it back. They have a lot of mana. And what are they gonna do with it? I suppose we could have potentially left some bad card on top of the deck, so they hit it with a tally. Although I think it was mostly lands we saw. A last march of the ants to draw a bunch of cards, alright. So they'll get to put some creatures on the battlefield, including a leveler and a familiar, not bad. They still have Lair of the Hydra as a potential blocker right now. No, they do not. So if we can overload Cyclonic Rift, we should be in the clear next turn. And then... Practical research, maybe, just to get us across the finish line. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the new Amara. So, Convoke Tokens deck still. And, uh, yeah, we've got a keepable hand. Turn one Halfling. It's gonna speed things up. 
If they play Mara, we can abrade it at least. Right, it's gonna be an Esper Sentinel first. And then it can still play Amara. Nope, it's gonna be a Kellen. Alright, it's a lot of stuff. I think we end up cycling Malorian Revealed. And then I could Mizzix Master it back if we don't find anything else later. Do I want a Steam Vents? Nah, Island is fine. Ooh, Anger of the Gods, that's huge. So, keep up my interaction, but I'm likely just gonna Anger next turn. Thraben Inspector. So they're gonna Convoke Imara. If Aspirin puts count from Kellen, I'm gonna have to abrade it. Makes sense for them to put a counter on Esper Sentinel as well. Alright, opponent got a card from the spellbook. And counter on Kellen. So I'll abrade it. Does mean they get to draw a card off Sentinel twice here. So it's not gonna be quite as devastating as I would have liked. But I'll still take the board wipe. Alright, so we're points back to square one. Next turn, we could mastery back the Anger of the Gods if needed. Now a Beast Whisper. Certainly worth taking out, and we can do so with an ill-timed explosion. Or we can just wait, let them draw one or two cards, and then cast Anger. I would be able to next turn play Malak and cast Mizzix Mastery on Anger. So assuming we have enough instants of sorceries, which we do, Malak doesn't die. And then for now, seize the spoils, discarding maybe a Cyclonic Rift, since I don't really want to bounce Beast Whisper and have them draw more cards. And I do need to keep my lands. Now I'll just play this tapped. Got the ill-timed explosion as a sweeper. Not sure if there's a way to tell which card they got from the spellbook, if there's a difference. Yeah, I guess there's a different set symbol. So it's not the Beast Whisper they got. I guess we can go through the spellbook real quick. Just to have an idea, lots of Convoke cards, which makes sense. Okay, so there's Amara once again. So yeah, if we can keep their boards under control, they wouldn't be able to Convoke much. Alright, we'll go with our plan. Malak into Mizzix Mastery, get back Anger. And then we still have an ill-timed explosion to do it again. To Keja's welcome for more card draw. Stalwart's fine. And an enforcer. Lots of one mana creatures. Ooh, nice spell swindle. So if I ill-timed explosion, I need to draw a two mana card to wipe their board basically, but I can always decide to just draw two with it, which is also fine. Make use of the discount, and then we'll still have Spell Swindle in the opponent's turn. All right, Iron Crack can go, and I'll land. Attack for 10, can't afford to opt since we need to keep up double blue. So ideally they tap out for something big, but their deck is probably mostly cheap creatures to set up the Convoke. And there's an Officer. Trigger's Welcome. Colony Garden makes another Chum Blocker. 
So this is where we want to find one of our fling effects to close out the game, so we can ignore all the blockers. It's a little bit risky to cast opt end of turn if our opponent passes with some mana untapped, because then I'll be shields down on spell swindle. All right, venerated locks on. That's worth it. Just to get five treasures, and then we can still opt and look for a finisher. I guess uh, yeah, I'll do it now so we don't waste a discount in our next turn. Inside is good. So let's untap first now. And a Magma Opus. Alright, that'll do it. Magma Opus. Can uh, take out their blockers. Two upstairs. Tab down some stuff. And attack for the win. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Rocco, Cabaretti, Cater, and our hand seems acceptable. Do still need a second red source for Storm's Wrath. But we're off to a quick start with two mana artifacts. Now we do still need to put an instant or sorcery in the graveyard for Malik. So we can't actually run it out right away. So another rent for Windfall would go a long way. Opponent's going to analyze the Pollen to get a basic. And there's a Mountain, perfect. So now, do we Windfall or... Could also play the Seed Shark to start incubating. Uh, but if I Windfall I can actually cast Malik next turn. Which is probably preferred even though it could get removed. Opponent with a Cold Steel Heart. And then probably want to hang on to Storm's Wrath, so maybe Midnight Clock goes, or I can just ditch the Sea Shark, and then Midnight Clock helps me replay Malik if they answer it. Sea Shark also not the best if we end up casting the Wrath. Okay, Mizzix Mastery lets me replay Windfall. So we can do that. Could also surveil maybe a more expensive card into the graveyard. But uh, yeah, I'm down to just get a mountain here. Play Malik. Play one mana, Mizzix Mastery. Now, if I... Mastery here, there's temporarily not going to be any instants or sorceries in the graveyard for Malik. Yeah, I hadn't considered that, so I can't actually go for it here. Put in place Rocco for X equals 1. Finds a Trap Finder. Okay, so... Problem now is if I Storm's Wrath... Then we also lose Malik, even though it grows by two, it's still four damage. So this is kind of awkward, not gonna lie. Although maybe maybe this still works actually. I guess I'm kinda of curious now to see. Because I cast Windfall, I have to discard the Storm's Wrath. But then state-based actions aren't checked until after. So we're actually still in the clear, but I did have to discard the Storm's Wrath for that to work, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so Malik back down to a 2-2, can cast some artifacts, and maybe next turn activate Celestis. So we're kind of just spinning our wheels, but we do have a lot of mana. They probably want the Trap Finder to die, so I'll take it. And a Harrow is next. And depopulate to wipe the board. That's fine, we can replay Malik pretty easily. Try and find our triggers. Possible they've got some combo with it. 
Although spell swindles, good insurance. Opponent's looking at the graveyard. Balagat recovery, analyze the pollen, that's fine. I'll let them search up whatever they want and just counter it. So they're gonna collect evidence here, letting them search up any creature they want. It's gonna be Terror of the Peaks, probably part of their combo. Okay, take our turn. And looting's not bad. Got a few lands we can discard. Start with iteration. And then yeah, I guess we just grab the Anger of the Gods in hand. And we can play Mindstone right now if we'd like. Although land's fine too, actually. Malik only a 6 6. I don't think we want a Gravitic Punch just yet. Uh, could flashback looting, of course. And then we'll still easily have Spell Swindle available. Alright, see, so get Restoration. I'm interested in casting. Can discard Gravitic Punch and still jumpstart it later. And that'll grow Malik as well. Alright, so we'll get in for six. Still have Spell Swindle available. And then next turn we can cast a nice Restoration. Signet's fine. Citywide Bust, destroying creatures with toughness four or greater. And do we fight over its... I think we do. Now we are shields down, but we should be able to find more answers next turn. So start with restoration. Okay, so... Can we just close out the game here? I'm pretty sure we can. Just bounce the Tower of the Peaks. Attack, and then Gravitic Punch with Jumpstart will close it out. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Blade of Forged. I've seen some budget builds that are kind of all in on the combo with... Uh, the new discover mechanic, so having some removal is important, and this hand will do. Can take out the blade before they go off, opponents mulliganing aggressively to find one of those cascade cards, so just gotta keep up our interaction for their commander. Not even gonna slide of hand, just gonna keep up a braid. And there's the blade. And there's the braid. So it's gonna cost them five mana to redeploy, by which time we can rewind. So now I don't mind midnight clock slide of hand. And uh, sure, we'll grab a signet. So yeah, the opponent's game plan is to play Blade Reforged, and then by playing a Cascade card that doesn't find any targets, they go through the entire deck, and then eventually grow the Blade Reforged to attack for lethal. So we just gotta prevent that from happening. So we can play Signet, keep up Rewind, although Prismari Command will also do. And then next turn we can play Malik with Interaction Backup. So we'll deal to draw to discard, I think, since I don't need Rivers Rebuke. So Rebuke and Temple can go. And 
Now we can play Malik and still uh, keep up a rewind had I tapped my mana properly, but Curate will do. Puna still won't be able to replay their commander. And then don't need either of these. Okay, far as a victory, we can potentially kick. Uh, let's see. I guess we can do that now, just to draw a card basically and grow Malik. Hit for 12, could also Storm's Wrath. Sure, I mean, we can go for it next turn and still present lethal. So they're gonna replay Blade or Forged, we can rewind, and that should do it. Alright, and our opponent scoops it up, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Pantlaza Dinosaurs. Our hand has a few issues, no early acceleration, fling not a card we want in our opener, overall a bit too clunky. This is a bit more acceptable. Prismari Command can make a treasure, now a Cold Steel Heart's nice too. Do I even cast a Faithless Looting? There's nothing in hand I actively want to get rid of. We've got our next couple land drops sorted, so yeah, let's hang on to it for now. And then Cold Steel Heart on blue. Opponent with Arranging Raptors. Don't really want to damage it with an Abrade to take it out. So, yeah, I think we stick to the plan of uh, Prismari Command to make a treasure. And then we can draw to discard two as well, maybe discarding the looting and get more value out of the graveyard. So we'll take two. And Smothering Tithe is next. Okay, that one's pretty annoying. So we'll draw in response. So our opponent will get a ton of treasure tokens out of it. So looting goes, and then... I guess we could still cast Opt here. A braid doesn't look all that great, to be fair. And do we want Mountain? Not really. Okay, so Pun gets a treasure. Play Malik, and then we can still cast Reign of Revelation thanks to the treasure. But I'll wait until their end step so we don't give them too many treasures. Looks like they have a removal spell, a Reckless Rage, just to ramp. That's fine. So they will be able to play Pantlaza. We'll see what they discover. A Rhythm of the Wild, so makes their creatures uncounterable. And end of turn, I'm still gonna cast Reign of Revelation. Ooh, Chandra could be good. Discard a land, could make it Flooded Strand since I don't foresee needing to get the Surveil land. So Smothering Tithe makes three treasures. And they can have another one. Okay, so Ill-Timed Explosion gives us another Sweeper, even though it gives the opponent more treasures as well. Or we can just play Chandra, uh, although damaging the Raptors, of course, lets them uh, get another land. So they'll have a lot of mana to cast whatever dinosaurs they have in hand, with haste potentially. So it's going to be difficult to protect Chandra. So maybe we take a slightly different approach here. And then I can attack with Malik. And before damage, if they take it, we can still intrude, although they might just jump with the Raptors. 
All right, opponent does trump, gets them another land. And then I probably main phase intrude, so I get to discount again in their turn. Should that be relevant? Okay, pour over the pages is a nice one. So it's big score, so we probably split those up. And then I would rather have big score, I think, even though it triggers their uh, tithe, I guess so does pour. But uh, we can cast this during their turn. So I'll get uh, a split like this. Big score is also good with Chandra, but not sure if we'll be able to set it up to copy the big score. All right, they gave us the three pile after all. So in that case, I'll just play Worn Power Stone since uh, there's nothing else we can really do. All right, opponent's got a lot of mana here. We'll see what damage they can do. Crasher is a good start. With haste, it can immediately make a large token. But last that triggers. So we're pretty much looking to immediately... Oof, Galta with haste. Is that lethal here? 10, 22. I guess we can still trump. Unless they hit another relevant card. An Archimancer we can frostbite. Anything else? Bloodbraid Elf with Cascade. Alright, well, we might just be dead here. Rhythm giving everything haste. We've got one blocker. Chump on Lassa. Can Frostbite something else. I guess a Bloodbraid. And then we'll still take 22 exactly. That's a shame. So yeah, next turn we might have been able to kind of combo off, maybe find a fling effect to close it out, but it uh, wasn't meant to be. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Muldrotha, the Gravetide. And uh, this hand's a little questionable. Don't have any ways to speed up casting Malek. Storm's Wrath, a bit of a nombo with Hardy Jin. And Fling, not a card we actively want in our opener. So I'll take a Mulligan. Alright, this is a little bit better. Cold Steel Heart on red. Can then Iteration hit our land drops. I guess could also cycle Lurian Reveal to get a Steam Vents. Yeah, Iteration will be better on turn 3. And then Muldrotha is going to be kind of a graveyard deck. Turn to Signet. And a Halfling. So they're off to a very explosive start. We will play Cold Steel Heart on red. So another turn before they can cast Muldrotha. Opponent passes with a bunch of mana untapped. Possible they have a counter spell. So, I'll start with Signet, and then we can Iteration. Still maybe play a land from the Iteration itself. If not, we'll play Thundering Falls. Okay, well, all lands it is. Pass it back, and then next turn. I can't quite play Malik and another spell in the same turn, since they're all double blue. Muldrotha resolves. Alright, now with the Pirate's Pillage, I'm down to play Malik and then Pillage. And then that actually leaves up a rewind during the opponent's turn, so that's great. Question is what to discard. Probably just uh, Thundering Falls now. Okay. So we can protect Malek if they try and remove it. Great Henge. That is a pretty good card. I guess never mind, it is uncounterable because of the Halfling, so... No countering the Great Henge. 
And now a reverse rebuke is an easy counter. Wouldn't be able to use my untamped lanes, unfortunately, but next turn we can do some things. Okay, so two mana Lorien revealed. I'll still be able to then time warp, so we'll start there. Chandra's not bad either. And then we want to time warp before attacking to grow Malik some more. Would have been sweet to copy time warp with Chandra, but that might be a little greedy here. Ooh, nice Cyclonic Rifts isn't bad either. So... Yeah, if we Cyclonic Rift with Overload, that's 4 mana. So can't quite play Chandra afterwards to burn them out. But we can play Chandra to add mana, and then still Cyclonic Rift, which is fine as well. Okay, send everything packing. Our opponent won't even have green mana to redeploy Moldrotha easily. And in the meantime, they're taking 12 from Malik. So next turn, Chandra can just deal 5 damage. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Koth's Fire of Resistance. What do we think of our hand? It's lacking a bit of ramp. Uh, Gravitic Punch, we could discard to pour over the pages and then still jumpstart it later. But yeah, if we don't find some acceleration, this hand's kind of lackluster. No real way to interact with a Planeswalker either. So I'll take a mulligan. Alright, this hand's not amazing, but keepable. Can start by casting Gaze. Or we can just surveil with a Falls. We might be able to find a 2-mana ramp artifact to play on turn 2. Opponent foretells, maybe a demon bolt. Okay, so don't need battle rage, but good to put it in the graveyard. And then I'll just keep one land. So for now we can surveil or we can flash back a gaze. And still try and find a 3-mana ramp card to set up turn 4 Malik. And then next turn maybe play the Shark if we don't find it. Opponent already playing a non-mountain land, so they may not be able to immediately take out a 4-toughness Shark. Although if this is a Demon Bolt, they've got it covered. Invasion of Regatha, okay. Deals 4, so maybe they're more of a burn deck. And what do we get? Some nice card draw spells to play after resolving Malik. I should probably keep at least one of them as a way to refuel. Rain is also a card we can cast on turn 4 after playing Seed Shark. And then I guess Intrude is something we can keep up alongside Spell Swindle. So I kind of like both. So for now we'll play the Shark. Which may not be long for the world, but we don't really need it. So Koth can deal 3 damage. It's just gonna search up a basic mountain. And then now Reign of Revelation will make us a nice incubator token. Fetch for a mountain. Now our land currently enters tapped, so finding an untapped land with Reign of Revelation is pretty important. They will try to take out the shark, but not before we incubate. Did not find an untapped land. Brotherhood's End can damage Planeswalkers. So that could finish off Koth. And then... Don't think we need Fling, although we have a lot of card draw here. Can probably get rid of a Chemist's Insight, which we can always jumpstart later. Milk you to 
Now we could also pressure Koth with our incubator token. The Hellkite scary. All right, we did find an untapped lane now. So if we think this is a demon bolt, they would cast it after I animate my incubator token to pressure Koth. And then they would get an illusion, which would go away end of turn. And then I can still brother it and so at least clear Koth. That's option one, although I might be better off just keeping up spell swindle here. Opponent does get to plus Koth, maybe make a large token and hit us. But if we can spell swindle something expensive, I'll be able to set up Malik plus some other spells. If not, we can still intrude. So yeah, let's uh, take that approach. If they didn't have a Demon Bolt available, it might have been a different story. I'll never forget the whole and then we could set up an intrude where we split 0 and 5, so we can maybe ambush the Hellkite, or they have to let us draw 5 cards. And Breaches, okay. Also dies to Brotherhood's End. They might try to transform the Invasion of Regatha to make a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, I'm not opposed to this uh, Intrude for 5 plan, now that we don't need to Spell Swindle anything too expensive. Alright, so 5-0, to zero, make a 5-5 five, five token. Although it is tempting to just grab some of these Treasure Makers to go with Malik. Possible our opponent can burn out our 5-5. Five, five at instant speed if they have another burn spell in combination with a demon bolt. So that would be kind of sad. Although next turn we can still Brotherhood's end to clear Koth and Breaches. So it's not like we have an awful turn lined up. Yeah, let's try it for science. Alright, we get a 5-5. Five, five. Can they remove it before blockers? Okay. And then Demon Bolt to finish it off. Alright, that's fine. And now Brotherhood's End can clean things up. Could also Rebuke. But uh, this seems like a pretty clean solution. Animator Incubator hit for 4. We'll never stop fighting. Could also play defense with it to block Den of the Bugbear, but I don't think our opponent's gonna fire that up yet. And we get to surveil. And we want a land. I think we do, since it allows us to play Malik and Practical Research or uh, Spell Swindle. Got plenty of blue-red dual lands to make that happen. Adversary can get back a Demon Bolts. That's fine. Now we also have a very large Malik thanks to all those spells that got put in the graveyard. So a fling is almost lethal. Points at 21. This is an 1818. So we want to tap carefully, leave our dual lands untapped. And then we have spell swindle backup. If not, we can practical research. And then next turn fling for the win. Defiler, yeah, that's worth countering. Give us four treasures. And then Research plus Fling should do it next turn. Pretty difficult for a red deck to take out a 20-powered creature. And if they did somehow have an Act of Treason effect, we could have cast Fling in response. So Practical Research for two mana. I guess River's Rebuke would also do it here. So... An embarrassment of riches, and our opponent scoops it up. Just too much value. Alright, so we got to see our Blue Rad Malik deck in action, and I'm quite impressed by what the deck is capable of. Plays a pretty decent control game, but then once we deploy Malik, it can actually close out games pretty quickly. The discount is super relevant. Just make sure to play Malik when you can actually make use of the discount in the same turn, unless you know the opponent won't be able to remove it instantly. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.